uh, was alleged to be, according to those folks, uh, you know, a, a great authority on crackle weed, world's leading authority, as someone said to me. When we did the show at Colby Sawyer, there was a consultant who was there at the college doing some other work uh, for the art department and came into the space and looked at it for a long time and then finally said, that can't be crackle weave or something. This was reported to me. Um, and so 20 years later, people are still surprised who are knowledgeable about weaving that a traditional weave like crackle can be used in quite the colorful and textured way that, that Nancy did. I was fascinated with the group most recently from the New Hampshire Weavers Guild who came down and a number of them were really interested in, well, how was that woven? So, and not very good curatorial practice, I allowed them to turn the weavings over so they could see exactly how something was handled on the backside. And they just loved it. Most of the visitors I've seen have been fascinated that you can actually paint landscapes in fabric. Uh, textile um, arts are terrific for giving an impression of um, any number of these titles that she gave them. Um, and they're just simply so beautiful. So actually a number of people had not realized that Nancy had died and came to me a couple of times asking, um, is there a price list? So I think it's important that the collection uh, be maintained as a single unity rather than continue to be just broken up um, because it's a, it's a major figure in the craft community, uh, a wonderful designer that had a lot to say about her native state. I think Nancy's great contribution was um, both technical, she reinvented the way of weaving something called crackle, um, but also um, brought her native talents as a designer to creating large-scale um, works that began in the early years <clears throat> with a sort of um, Japanese-style landscape but very quickly evolved from a generic Japanese influence uh, design to something that was more um, related to where she was. That it was the woods and the fields and the marshes and the sky of New Hampshire, both in color, uh, but also in pattern. And this combination of, of technical skills um, excellent color sense and the ability to use weaving as a technique to create these large-scale New Hampshire images, it seems to me, is um, the central point of the larger weavings. Uh, what's, I think, possibly forgotten and we couldn't do enough of in the exhibit is the impact that her clothing had. Um, when we first opened the show, had an opening reception, uh, quite a number of women came wearing their jackets, their coats, their hats uh, that they still had, uh, that they had purchased from Nancy years and years and years ago. And even the uh, members of the New Hampshire Weavers Guild were talking about how many different um, jackets and other uh, costume pieces they each remembered, and most of them still had in their closet somewhere.
One comment that's come up with many people who have visited, be they weaving people or just people who have known her over the years, said that they just feel that they somehow didn't organize their own lives enough to even attempt to accomplish the things that Nancy did or was interested in. Well, I think, there, I think her, her discipline in probably all aspects of her life that I knew about is the very central reason that she accomplished the things she did. It was really interesting to see all the work hung in, in, in one place and you could sort of see the various stages of the career. And frankly, I was just blown away with it. It was so attractive and it was laid out so, so well. And so you really got a wonderful sense of not just what the work was, but how it came into being. I do think it's interesting um, to take a look at a period of time that 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 was 20 years ago, and and then move it all in in 20 years forward and get a sense for how it still inspires people and is still interesting. For people.